and welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. I am Lydia Odije Ochi. We're glad to have you join us once again. All things being equal, Nigeria Air, the nation's national carrier, will take to the skies in April 2022. This followed the approval of the outline business case for the project by the Federal Executive Council. Minister of Aviation, Minister of Aviation Hadi Sirika announced this while briefing journalists after the meeting of the council presided over by President Muhammad Buhari. We shall bring you details in the course of the bulletin. The bill that seeks to further protect owners of trademarks and copyright has passed second reading in the Senate, sponsored by Senator Ebikunle and Mosun. The proposed law aims to introduce measures that will prohibit the manufacture, production, and sales of counterfeits in Nigeria. When passed, the bill is expected to strengthen efficient prevention and prosecution of offenders while protecting trademarks and consumers from unwholesome products. Reduce measures to further protect owners of trademark against counterfeit of their goods, protect consumers from dangerous counterfeit goods, and ensure that appropriate revenue accrues to government from trademark owners of goods. I think definitely we should all support it. I think it can only increase our internal production once we strengthen this this bill, once we strengthen our laws, and we've we've uh, uh, stopped or minimized the amount of counterfeit uh, goods that come into the country. Those in favor that this bill be now read a second time, say aye. aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. Senate paid tribute to Umaru Sani, former clerk of both chambers of the National Assembly, who died a few days ago. The House of Representatives has passed a resolution to investigate the implementation of the National Cancer Control Plan 2018 to 2022, launched by the federal government in 2018. The matter raised by Chairman House Committee on Information, Shagun Odebomi, notes that President Buhari had, in giving effect to the plan, signed the bill for the establishment of the National Institute for Cancer Research and Treatment of Cancer Patients in Nigeria on 29th of December 2017. The lawmakers expressed worry that despite increasing cases of cancer and cost of treatment, only four centers are functional in the country. The investigation aims also to ascertain the status of radiotherapy treatment centers. Meanwhile, the House has urged authorities to tackle the resurgence of banditry along the Abuja Kaduna Highway, as raised by Representative Hassan Nalaraba under matters of urgent public importance. Meanwhile, the House Committee on Public Service Matters has told contractor handling the construction of the National Assembly Service Commission permanent site to ensure the project is completed before the end of the ninth assembly. This was when the committee undertook an assessment of the level of work done. National Assembly correspondent Dayo Ogunshola reports. The inspection by the House Committee on Public Service Matters was to evaluate the level of work done by the contractor, why expressing concerns that not much has been achieved between the period of the foundation laying ceremony and the time of inspection. Chairman of the committee and joined the contractor to address the bottlenecks entering the pace of the project. I will want to urge them to get necessary approval from the security because we are within the security zone. We are supposed to get necessary approval to make sure that this work continues. Giving assurances that the time lost will be covered an official of the contracting firm assured the committee that meeting the quality specification of the project is a key priority. The good part is the four weeks lost is not completely lost. We use the time to do all the preparations. The committee equally inspected some construction materials delivered on site. From the National Assembly, Dayo Gunshola, NTA News. Director General of the National Automotive Design and Development Council, Jelani Aliu, says Nigeria's capacity to scale electric cars giving the needed support. This was part of the country's position at the Intra-Africa Trade Fair, which held in Durban, South Africa. Onengye Fineface has more. Beyond rhetoric, Nigeria has shown its capacity to produce electric cars with the Hyundai Sport Utility Vehicle. Jelani Aliu at a panel of the Intra-Africa Trade Fair in Durban, South Africa, promoted this capacity to produce and assemble 
world-class electric vehicles in Nigeria. He spoke of Nigeria's commitment to increase local production for use in country and for export to other African countries to create more jobs and make transportation clean and sustainable. We have a policy already in effect. Uh, what we're now working on is to back it by law. We believe that very soon we will have that policy signed by our president and we will then be in an even stronger position to further develop the local automotive sector. The Intra-Africa Trade Fair is our multinational event that brought over 55 African countries together to showcase their respective products and services for marketing across the continent. On Nengie Fine Face, NT News. Nigeria is on a sustainable path of economic recovery and growth with greater prospects of taking over its rightful place in the Committee of Nations to advance economic development. This was the general stand of guests on NTA Tuesday Live on the country's recent participation in the recent Durban Paris Investment Forum. Aoba Karusman Akwanga reports. The Durban Paris Investment and Security Forum are some of the nation's remarkable efforts towards reactivating the economy from the COVID-19 global economic downturn. Guests say Nigeria's participation offers greater windows for inflow of foreign investment and security interventions at domestic, regional and global levels. The projection is that in the next 10 years, intra-African trade will double. And Nigeria has a lot to gain from that. And unless the country positions itself properly and gets the news out there, it, it would not just be by a sudden flight. So you find the Nigerian president being the salesman for the country. That until Nigeria stand, the black man anywhere in the world is in trouble. The future of any black man anywhere, being in America, anywhere, is the success of Nigeria. So it is important, that's why for people like me, I always come back to Nigeria to do anything I can do to raise, because there's nothing I can do there that will be meaningful. Nigeria has to succeed if I want to succeed. But we must know the economy is already diversified. It is. When we rebased the economy way back then, I think it was 2014 or something when the economy was rebased and we became the largest economy in, in Africa, we found out that our oil was not driving our GDP. In fact, agriculture was not driving our GDP. It was services. The need to promote local content and develop infrastructure also took center stage with priority to non-oil and renewable energy sector as key product on the global stage. The trade fair has opened a window for business-to-business -business, uh, discussions, for matchmaking their businesses, and then uh, it in includes also technological transfer. And I think as we ride along, as we try to embrace this new global campaign to get to sell Nigeria, to have tremendous effort that are being made by public security departments. As Nigeria awaits derivable benefit from the summit, Stakeholders are optimistic that the measures put in place by the federal government will guarantee more foreign participation in the economy and usher in a new dawn of economic prosperity. In Abuja, Abubakar Usman Akwanga, NT News. We told you earlier that the Federal Executive Council has approved Nigeria Air, the nation's national career that will take to the skies hopefully in April 2022. Adamu Sambo will now bring us the report. It's the sixth and perhaps the last time the Federal Executive Council under the Buhari presidency will be considering the outlined business case for the establishment of the national career. Nigeria Air, which of course, uh, if you remember back in time, this was subject to national debate. And 400,000 people, 400,000 people participated to choose the name, the color, the logo, everything. And uh, it was produced that time. Um, and it was launched also in Farnborough as far back as uh, 2018. The structure of the proposed airline indicates that government will be owning not more than 5% of the equity share and 46% by Nigerian entrepreneurs. The remaining 49% will be held by what the minister called strategic equity partners to be sourced during the procurement phase of the project. This airline, if 
started and within the first few years will generate about 70,000 jobs. These 70,000 jobs, they are higher than the total number of civil servants that we have in the country. Its importance had been well discussed, but one important item is the AU Agenda 2063, which speaks to integration of Africa, which speaks to the commerce and trade within Africa, that is intra-Africa. The quickest way that you can integrate Africa is by air. Once the right policy is in place, like SATEM, you can connect Africa, and then, of course, the needed integration will happen. Hadi Sirika also secured the council's approval of a 1.49 billion naira contract for the provision of automated civil aviation regulatory equipment called the Truth Machine for the Namdi Azikwe International Airport Abuja. This is a software that will allow all of the activity of civil aviation regulation to be done electronically on one platform, including payments, including follow-up on personal licensing, the medicals, the um, economic regulation of airlines, safety regulation of airlines, and all other businesses within the envelope of civil aviation will be monitored by this single software. All of the truth of regulation of civil aviation will appear on this platform. It's an extremely important uh, software that the world has now uh, come to terms with. Also approved by the Council is the award of contract for the provision of training, logistics, operational equipment and maintenance support under the Integrated National Surveillance and Waterways Protection Solution Infrastructure in Nigeria. This is more like a recurrent expenditure for Deep Blue Project. If you stop by purchase of petroleum, payment of allowances and the size that you need to insert cameras and all that, then the two function. So that's what the six of achieve. There is huge improvement in the security in our waterways now, and uh, we hope that it will continue as we progress. Over 6.3 billion naira is to be expended on the project aimed at enhancing the safety and security in Nigeria's maritime domain as well as the Gulf of Guinea for economic development. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Thanks, Adamo. In a bid to deepen understanding of 5G technology and ensure synergy and linkages among the industry and the citizens, the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC, has engaged some Nigerian students in essay writing on 5G technology. Successful competitors who were awarded and given cash prizes were encouraged by the Executive Vice Chairman of the Commission, Professor Omar Dambata, to go further in exploring and sharing the knowledge gained to others. ICT correspondent Joseph Johnson reports. It had victory moment. Esther Berger, a 600 level student of veterinary medicine at the University of Ilorin, is the overall winner of the third NCC National ASA competition on 5G technology. Beating over 2,000 students from 97 public and private tertiary institutions. From her presentation, she dismisses what she calls misconstrued notions surrounding the tech as they relate to health. Even the runners-up were also affirmative on the need for Nigerians to jettison misguided beliefs and embrace the technology, which they say will be in the country's best interest. Yes, the fear of cancer we are having from 5G, it's a lie. <laughs> it's a lie. So please, 5G does not negatively impact us. The understanding and acceptance of 5G is one side of a coin, while the issue of seamless deployment is the other. And the regulatory body is now even more concerned about these two sides as it prepares to auction the spectrum ahead of the proposed 2022 5G deployment plan. We are ready to receive bids for the resource that will be used to deploy these services. I'm talking about spectrum. Since its first mention in the country, 5G has been one issue that tends to divide the opinions of some Nigerians. But as the clock ticks towards its eventual deployment, it also reflects developments in countries where the technology has since been deployed. The question is, how soon will Africa's leading economy end the catching of game? 
to be at par with technologically advanced countries. Hopefully, before too long. Joseph Johnson, NTN News. On the heels of the Global Climate Conference COP26, the Ministry of Environment is engaging stakeholders to formulate data and information management strategies to guide environmental governance in Nigeria. Onegi Fineface once more reports. Data is considered a crucial component of Nigeria's nationally determined contribution to the Paris Agreement. To better understand and profess solutions to environmental problems in Nigeria, the National Environmental Standards and Regulation Enforcement Agency, NESRA, is dedicating its 15th National Stakeholders Forum to the key role of data and information management in formulating policies, financial mechanisms, and rules that regulate the processes of protecting the environment. In the spirit of thinking globally and acting locally, we are expected to track the rates of deforestation in Nigeria through the generation of relevant data. The forum will identify ways of building and sustaining effective data management to aid Nigeria's efforts at combating climate change and conserving natural ecosystems. Nestle has developed a compliance monitoring information system, NECMIS, which is dedicated to ensuring that compliance records generated over the years are organized to produce useful environmental information for environmental governance. Outcomes of the forum will also guide NESRA in enforcing environmental regulations in Nigeria. In Abuja, Onengiye Fineface, NT News. President Muhammad Buhari and his cabinet are wishing his chief of staff, Professor Ibrahim Agbola Gambari, a happy 77th birthday celebration. A statement by the senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Garba Shehu, stated that Shortly before the meeting of the Federal Executive Council meeting began, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, announced to the Cabinet the Chief of Staff, Professor Gambari's birthday. Professor Gambari joined the Government as Chief of Staff 20 months ago following the demise of the former holder of the office, Abba Kari. Before this, Professor Gambari had served as Minister of Foreign Affairs under the military government led by the then Major General Muhammad Buhari in the 1980s and went on to serve as Nigeria's permanent representative to the United Nations. He thereafter joined the United Nations system, rising to the position of Under Secretary General and Special Advisor on Africa. He served as a joint African Union and UN, UN Special Representatives in some of the country's troubled countries, including Angola, Darfur, Iraq, and Myanmar. Described as an accomplished academic, Professor Gambari has taught at the City University of New York, the State University of New York at Albany, and Ahmadu Bello University, Zaria, as well as served as a visiting professor at the John Hopkins School of Advanced International Studies in Baltimore, Maryland. He is widely published in Nigerian and international scholarly journals and has written several books on Nigerian foreign policy. Professor Gambari is the founder of the Savannah Center for Diplomacy, Democracy and Development, a non-governmental think tank established in Abuja. JOS is our first port of call. Felicia will be guiding us. Hello, Felicia. Hello, Lydia. Thank you for joining us in JOS. National Drug Law Enforcement Agency says it will sustain its war against drug abuse until its dream of making Nigeria drug-free is realized. This was at an interactive session with stakeholders in JOS. Unemployment, trauma, and incessant conflicts were identified as some of the major causes of youth's indulgence in the consumption of narcotic drugs on the plateau. We normally used to interact with them and educate them on how to keep lectures in secondary schools, primary schools, and high institutions for drug abuse, tragedy, and motivation. We have to deal now not only with human rights, but with the issue of drug abuse. 
to chart the way forward, Chairman NDLEA, Brigadier General Buba Marwa, who expressed worry over the effects of drug abuse in the society, urged all to rise up to the responsibility of making Nigeria drug free. Quite clear in my mind that in Plateau State, we have stakeholders who are really very interested and keen to get to the bottom of the drug scourge in Nigeria. Illicit substances and hide them in very imaginative ways, thinking that they will beat the NDLEA, but we are two steps ahead of them. The NDLEA also recommends drug tests for students, intending couples, political and traditional leaders, security agents, road transport workers, and civil servants as part of efforts to curb the meanings of drug abuse. Commander Operation Safe Haven, Major General Ibrahim Ali says he will ensure a secured environment for uninterrupted academic activities on the plateau. He gave the assurance while receiving school children at the headquarters of Operation Safe Haven in Jos. Ekemeren Keneng Ladoja reports. The primary and nursery school children of Just South Local Government Area expressed their appreciation to the Commander Operation Safe Heaven, Major General Ibrahim Ali, for his untiring efforts in ensuring peace in Plateau State. Speaking on behalf of the children, the Child Chairperson Children Council Just South, Iga Enesofi, says the visit would give a lifetime memory and spur the children to become successful in their chosen careers. While thanking the commander for his speedy response to issues of security on the plateau, the children expressed their desire to emulate the leadership qualities of the commander, who they described as accommodating, honest, and hardworking. The Learn and Grow Literacy School promotes reading culture and engages in leadership training of children from diverse backgrounds. The Commander Operation Safe Heaven, Major General Ibrahim Ali, urged the children to take lessons from leaders with good virtues and unblemished track records, assuring the children of safe environment for uninterrupted academic activities. I want you to take example from good leaders. Leaders with good virtues. Leaders with good track records. While describing discipline as the bedrock of success, Major General Ali also advised them to listen to their parents, teachers, community, and religious leaders for their overall growth and development. In Joss, Ekemeren Kaneng Ladoja, NTA News. This is Nationwide. We will take some messages. The news continues shortly. Stay with us. The Abdul Salami A. Abubakar Institute for Peace and Sustainable Development Studies cordially invites the public to the first script in honor of General Abdul Salami A. Abubakar, GCFR CSG. Theme General Abdul Salami A. Abubakar, a mediator and bridge builder. Date 25th to 27th November 2021. Venue Margaret Ipu Hall, Hot in Suites, number one, Uke Street, Garki Abuja. Issues to be discussed include triggers of a conflict in Africa, mediation for peace and security in Nigeria and beyond. Distinguished personalities include His Excellency Jean Claude Kasi Brow, His Excellency Musafaki Mahamat, Chairman of African Union, His Excellency General Ibrahim B. Babangida, His Excellency Goodluck Ebele Jonathan, His Excellency Olushegun Obasanjo, GCFR, and His Excellency Tabo Mbeki are to speak on managing conflict in Africa. His Excellency Muhammad Buhari, President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, will also present a speech. Dr. Diamond Priye Ogidi, Director, Announcer. The town hall meeting on the Petroleum Industry Act, earlier scheduled for Thursday, 25th November 2021, has now been postponed. A new date will be announced later. All inconveniences are highly regretted. Announcer, al Lai Mohammed, Honorable Minister of Information and Culture. The Vice Chancellor, Samuel Adigboiga University, Ogwa, Edo State, Professor A. Babatunde Idou, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, Governing Council, and Senate, cordially invites the public to the 6th and 7th Combined Convocation Ceremony for the award of first and higher degrees and the conferment of honorary degrees. Date, Friday, 26 November 2021, at John Babatokbe Hall by 11 a.m. Convocation lecture will be delivered on Thursday, 25th November by Professor Charles Ayo at 2 p.m. Also note, 
state that the 2021-2022 undergraduate and postgraduate admissions of Samuel Adeboyega University is on. Hurry now and secure admissions into one of the fastest growing private universities in Africa. For more information, visit www.sau.edu.ng or call 0705-079-1222. Announcer, Mr. Oluyemi Esson, Acting Registrar. The League of Women Voters of Nigeria, NILOV, is set to host women and men from across the globe in Abuja on the 25th of November 2021, celebrating its 25th anniversary with the theme Nigerian Women Overcoming Challenges in Politics and Leadership. Notable speakers are NAOB, Governance Team Leader and Country Director Action Aid Nigeria, Patrick Otieno Lumumba, former Director of the Kenyan Anti Corruption Commission and Activist and Fiery Speaker, Amina Mohammed, Deputy Secretary of the United Nations. NILOV, uplifting and empowering. Empowering women, Nile of Together We Can. Announcers, Ambassador Dr. Kema Chikwe, Chairman, National Organizing Committee, Regina Omo Agege, Secretary, NOC, and Right Honorable Dame Esther Uduehi, the founder. Thanks for staying with us. Minister of State Petroleum Resources Timir Prince Silva has undertaken an on the spot assessment of the oil spill site of ITO Eastern Exploration Company in Basambri, Bayelsa State. The minister, accompanied by key stakeholders, said the president is very concerned about the spill. That is why he sent delegation to come and have an on the spot assessment of the situation. He acknowledged that the spill is a serious environmental concern that needs urgent measures to contain it, stressing that no stone will be left unturned in dealing with the environmental problem. Already, relevant agencies have been deployed in the area to tackle the oil spill, adding that there is need to bring in support to help clean up the spill. The minister said it is important for him to come to see things for himself to ensure that there is no problem between the oil company and the community. ITO on November 5th reported a major oil leak from its oil mining lease, OML 29, in Nembe, Bayelsa State. In adopting a multidisciplinary approach to military studies in institutions such as the National Defense College, the Nigerian military is enhancing the leadership and analytical thinking skills of personnel and other participants critical to responding to security situations. Defense correspondent Nadia Tijani reports on the latest approach organized for course 30 participants at the college in Abuja. Military institutions converging to shape military minds and hone the leadership skills of professionals, this time in the area of science and technology, a strategic component of military operations. The Air Force Institute of Technology, which plays a critical role in training technicians who maintain the nation's air assets, among other equipment, is on hand to guide Course 30 participants through the role of science technology in national security. Its impact on uh, uh, human security, looking at the whole of society's approach. This scientific principle, coupled with the whole of society approach, is in line with the NDC's vision of developing men and women of intellect, courage, and patriotism. Uh, we have 102 participants from um, 17 countries, including Nigeria, solving uh, various security and developmental challenges. It is expected that the knowledge gained will be applied to enhance national security. Nadja Atutijani, NTA News. Meanwhile, Army War College Nigeria is strengthening relationship between the three services of the armed forces and other agencies to overcome national security challenges in the country and beyond. This formed part of the graduation lecture of course five of 2021 participants of the college. Aubaka Rusman Akwanga has that report. Synergy amongst the three services of the Nigerian Armed Forces has been described as a short sure way to clip in the wings of notorious syndicates terrorizing parts of the country. Now the 2021 graduates of the Army War College Nigeria, the new approach is on strengthening the existing relationships for a stable country and secured future. Without doubt, jointness amongst the three services is highly imperative 
to fostering comprehensive approach to national security in our nation. It is against this backdrop that the topic for this graduation lecture, enhancing jointness in the armed forces of Nigeria, my perspective, is indeed apt. To the Chief of Defense Staff, a more sophisticated measure and attitudinal change are being evolved to match present security reality of emerging threat to national unity. In response to this very interest, the Armed Forces of Nigeria have continued to support the police and other security agencies towards containing the situation by making several security interventions through activation of several internal security operations which cut across the geopolitical zones. The 63 participants who cut across Army, Navy, Air Force and all the relevant security agencies are expected to drive the required change at domestic, regional and global levels. In Abuja, Abubakar Usmara Kwanga, NT News. As part of efforts to restore peace in Katsina State, the Elders Forum in the state is seeking the presence of more personnel of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps. Abdurrahman Usman Jibila reports that the Elders made the appeal during a visit to the Corps headquarters in Abuja. Elders on the move for peace from Katsina to Abuja quite a distance, but distance worth embarking on a price for peace. Senator Abba Ali leading the forum, purpose well defined to form a common front with the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps for peace to return in Katsina State, especially the frontline local government areas. It is our belief that you will put in your best towards the improvement of the security in our dear nation. I think uh, you should look into areas of boosting their capacity by providing them with logistics. I want to encourage you to continue to work hard and liaise with each other, and that will give you more. For the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, all what the Rapid Response Squad and the Agro Rangers Unit of the Corps needed was intelligence, and the offering from the elders is quite apt. And encouraging. We have not been able to prepare for this conflict over time because uh, perhaps we never thought that we can be confronted with this kind of conflict. But from the new strategies that we have adopted by all security services agencies, I think we are coming to the end of this conflict. Mission accomplished. Now back to Katsina with a promise of community support. But a word for the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps Commandant General. More logistics for your men. The battle will be won soon. In Abuja, Abraham Usman Jibrila, NTA News. A delegation from the German government is in Nigeria to partner with the Police Service Commission to create, design, and run a reform pr program for the Nigeria Police Force. Francis Form has details. Commissioner one. This visit by the German delegation to Nigeria is to enhance the capacity of officers and men of the force in key areas of the Nigeria police structure and bring about a paradigm shift in alignment with global best standards. Police Service Commission Chairman Musli Adiola Smith, while responding to German's delegation position on the management of protest without the use of arms, says... Nigerian protesters are usually armed, and law enforcement agents mostly have to defend themselves from assault. Uh, when we have protests or demonstrations in this country, it will not be fair to compare it with the ones abroad. And I have my reason for this. Because from nowhere, sometimes you may find group joining the demonstrators. The German delegation was also at the force headquarters on a similar mission. DIG Sanu Silemu, who stood in for the IGP, expressed the willingness of the force leadership to embrace reforms in all sectors of the Nigeria place. The DIG assured the delegation that Nigerians and the present administration is poised to cooperate with the German delegation and other development partners on creating an enabling platform for general reforms of the force to promote professionalism, human rights-based issues, and effective placing of the country. Frank says from NTA News. 
We're going to Ibadan now, and Adebola is standing by with more reports from that zone. Hello, Adebola. Lydia, welcome to Ibadan. Commitment to the success of future elections can only be achieved through determination. Resident Electoral Commissioner for Oyo State, Mutiu Agboke, made this known at a stakeholders meeting organized by INEC to create awareness on the ongoing voter registration exercise in the state. Funke Amole's report is here presented. The stakeholders meeting was to sensitize the public on the ongoing nationwide continuous voter registration and the need to support INEC towards successful future elections. The resident electoral commissioner confirmed the creation of 1,607 additional polling units in Royal State and urged residents to key into the technological drive of the commission to obscure their gains. We use technology to simplify a lot of things for ourselves in all the stages of our election. Alasin of Oyo Oba Lamidi Adeyemi promised to synergize with the commission in sensitizing the people of his community. So if we are voters, if we trust their neck and we listen to them and follow the guideline, by the grace of God, the election that is coming in 2023 will be very credible and fair. The event had in attendance security agencies, traditional and religious leaders, as well as members of the public. Over 150 indigent persons in Ogun State have benefited from the training and empowerment program at the instance of the National Agency for Control of AIDS, NACA. Correspondent Bumi Uni reports that this is in line with the federal government's initiative to provide economic strengthening for HIV and AIDS carriers. The National Agency for the Control of AIDS, NACA, over the years has been collaborating with government and private business enterprises and institutions to facilitate various interventions. This training and empowerment program, which was facilitated by Senator Dikpo Ojujiri, who is the board chairman of NACA. To provide entrepreneurial training for our people so that uh, when they're empowered, and they can own their businesses, they will be engaged in risky behavior. The numerous empowerment program uh, organized by the federal government to keep our youth busy and also to make them self-sufficient. Some of the skills that participants were able to acquire at the event are tie and dye, barbing, soap making, catering, makeup. From Oderemo, Bumi Oni, NTA News. It's still nationwide on the NTA. Nana Aisha in Sokoto takes over after these messages. Stay with us. Industry Act, earlier scheduled for Thursday, 25th November 2021, has now been postponed. A new date will be announced later. All inconveniences are highly regretted. Announcer Al Hajilai Mohammed, Honorable Minister of Information and Culture. Nigerian youths are about the greatest assets the country has at the moment. It is therefore not surprising that the administration of President Muhammad Buhari is strategically responding to the yearnings of the youth 
through multiple projects and programs. Youth Entrepreneurship Support Years by Bank of Industry, the youth investment fund by the CBN, and several other conditional cash transfer programs. Recruitment of 774,000 social workers, majority of whom are youths, and so many other projects that are beneficial to youths directly or indirectly. If the administration can do all this, definitely with a degree of patience and time, it can achieve more. Nigerian youths must come together to say no to terrorism, no to vandalism, and no to all disruptive tendencies. Hashtag Youth for Greater Nigeria, pacifying the youths, unifying the nation. History, um, well, it's history. So either you know it or you don't. My advice to the younger generation is that they should learn from what we have started and what we have left. I did things that ordinarily I should not have been doing. What that meant was that I was working hard. Whatever assignment you are given in life. Putting your best. The military years were a disaster. Smoldering effects of all that is what we are trying to cure. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Nationwide. Well, today, um, Sokoto State Government is on track towards accomplishing the third sustainable development goal by ensuring effective healthcare delivery to the people. The United Nations resident coordinator in Nigeria, Mr. Edward Kalon, made the remark while inaugurating Quarry General Hospital. Dalhatu Abdullahi has more. I commission this general hospital for the service of humanity. The General Hospital Quarry is among the inherited healthcare projects completed by the present administration. This brings the number of secondary health facilities in the state to 22 that were either renovated, upgraded, expanded, or newly constructed to provide effective healthcare service to the people. General Hospital Quarry was awarded at the over 172 million naira and equipped with standard equipment at the cost of over 118 million naira. Healthcare has always come second. This time around this year, we have met the target by the AU African Union of 15% budgetary allocation to healthcare. I call on you to also explore the opportunities of public-private partnerships, engagement with the private sector. Sokoto State Government is currently investing huge resources in the construction of Sokoto State University Teaching Hospital, Siri Premier Hospitals at Tambwal, Salmon Bruni and Dabinji, General Hospitals at Dengue and Wamoko, upgrading of primary health centers to General Hospitals at Kuchi, Sanyana, Salami and Achida, in addition to the already completed Ultra Modern Diagnostic Medical Center, Farfaru, among others, in Sakwatu, Dalhatu Abdullahi, NTA News. About 500 patients in Yauri Emirates have benefited from the free medical outreach organized by Hydroelectric Producing Areas Development Commission in collaboration with Medic Aid Cancer Foundation in Yauri. Hassana Abubakar Koko has the details. The founder and chief executive officer, Medicaid Cancer Foundation, and wife of KV State Governor, Dr. Zainab Shinkafi Bagudu, said the program is aimed at assisting women and other less privileged people in Yauri Emirates with free drugs and other medications. 
the wife of the governor who commended hydroelectric power producing area development commission the state's ministry of health and the nigerian medical association as well as other partners for their support in ensuring the success of the exercise called on women to always visit the nearest hospital whenever they notice any change on their body. So we want to be amongst these countries by screening and early treatment, by education, by uh, offering the vaccination, which we have done right here in Yaori. We hope to be able to totally eradicate cervical cancer. The representative of Hyperdeck alleged use of al -Hassan explained that the program is part of the Commission's corporate social responsibility and thanked the wife of the governor for her programs that directly touches the lives of the people of the area. Other speakers gave an overview of cancer as a disease. They called on the beneficiaries to take advantage of the exercise. Some of the beneficiaries expressed appreciation for the gesture. Thank her very much for seeing this occasion, for helping much people about these having sicknesses. Highlights at the event was presentation of foodstuff and clothing materials to the beneficiaries. From Miyauri Kebi State, Hassan Abubakar Koko, NTA News. Well, that's it from us here in Sokoto. Nationwide continues with Lydia in Abuja. Thank you, Nana Aisha. President Mohamed Buhari sends warm felicitations to the former group Managing Director of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, Dr. Jackson Geyos Obaseki, on his 76th birthday. President Buhari congratulates the renowned oil and gas expert for his dedication to national development, particularly in one of the cornerstones of the economy, instituting reforms, counseling leaders, and opening up opportunities for more investments. He commends Dr. Obaseki's foresight in the energy sector and shared experience to prepare the nation for the challenges and gains. The president prays for all round well-being of the chairman, Brass LNG, and his family. Cancer is one of the leading causes of deaths globally as it spares no one. Concerned about the havoc caused by gynecological cancers, the National Center for Women Development organized a workshop on strategy towards early detection, treatment, and elimination. Hingeno John Adams reports. These women are here to learn how to fight and defeat a common enemy that has been ravaging womanhood and claiming lives fast. It is called cancer. It keeps me aware, it keeps me aware of um, my organs, and it keeps me aware of my health. Data by the World Health Organization shows that, among women, breast cancer takes the lead, accounting for about 2.26 million cases and 685,000 deaths in 2020. More worrisome is that cervical cancer, a preventable and treatable form of cancer, is the second leading cause of death among women. We can at least start with incorporating human papilloma virus vaccination into our national immunization program, use our known linkages and break the, the vaccine inequities and get some vaccine work. As we continue to do advocacy on issues like that, if, it, if, if it's continued just like as an in information to get down and they, um, everybody that is concerned, the stakeholders will have no other alternative than to do the right thing. Whatever we have heard and discussed today will be part of our next strategy in uh, budgeting and also planning. As the burden of gynecological cancers increases globally, key players in the health sector are worried that if nothing is done, cervical cancer alone will claim about 400,000 lives by 2030. In Lagos, Hinginu John Adams, NTA News. Recently, the 2021 West African SSCE results were released showing that 89.62% of candidates have active pass. Hingino John Adams again spoke with some experts on the performance of candidates and our reports. 
The usual May-June West African Senior School Certificate Examination could not hold as scheduled in 2021, but was conducted between August 16 and October 8 due to the continuous effects of the coronavirus pandemic. Even amidst uncertainties caused by the pandemic, the examination witnessed commendable improvement. There is an appreciable 16.46% improvement in performance in this regard. This is the first time that we are having this kind of results. 81.7 is not a joke. Despite the improvement, it is sad that results of 10.9% of candidates were withheld in connection with examination malpractice. I was not really happy reading about this because this has so much impact on the kind of society we will have. It is believed that the improvement will be consolidated in coming years. In Lagos, Hinginu John Adams, NTA News. Security consciousness among citizens is one of the major factors identified as critical in containing security threats across Nigerian schools. This was at the 7th Annual Safe School Consultative Conference for Education and Security. Stakeholders organized by Exams Ethics Marshals in collaboration with partners in Abuja. Kenneth Nani reports. Security agencies, school administrators and regulators, the media and other relevant stakeholders are here to appraise the Safe Schools Declaration Initiative and the lessons learned from the security emergency response in schools especially in the northern region. The Nigerian Army often mobilized community leaders in stakeholders' meetings to sensitize them on their roles in securing the schools within their environment. Several attacks have been neutralized and others have been arrested. As I speak, surveillance and intelligence gathering are ongoing, and these attacks in school will soon be a thing of the past. So we must achieve the We must punish the wrongdoing so that it will be a lesson for others to go through properly. Increasing number of out-of-school children, the conference identified as one of the consequences of the emerging threats in schools. This, they say, requires multifaceted approach, including deployment of technology to tackle the challenges. The essence was to sensitize people. We saw this in advance and we thought uh, we should begin to bring it to the notice of people so that people may be more conscious of the need for security. We even have a safe school manual. Drug consumption also you know, uh, seems to invigorate these kidnappers. Yes, what Nigerian government in collaboration with citizens should be doing at this point in time to ensure that Nigerian schools are safe, have been evaluated and streamlined at the conference hall. But the underscored point is that it is a task for all. Therefore, all hands must be on deck. Kenneth Nanim, NTA News. The Nigerian police says the Police Act empowers the organization to investigate, arrest, and prosecute any person allegedly involved in criminal breach of trust. Police counsel Fidelis Ogobe reiterated this at the Independent Investigative Panel on Human Rights Violations by the defunct SARS in Abuja. Judicial, judiciary correspondent Jaya Chinguba reports that the panel also heard the case of a retired soldier whose bank account was emptied while unlawfully detained. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Uzama Mwachiku had petitioned the panel alleging that one Nicholas Azuka defrauded them while trying to purchase a property from him. Following the allegation against him, the police arrested and detained him. The police counsel, Fidelis Ogobe, told the panel that from the evidence before the panel, there is a valid criminal allegation against Azuka for which the police arrested and detained him under Section 66 of the Police Act. He told the panel that the law does not allow criminals to benefit from proceeds of crime. Though the couple has no legal representation, Mr. Mwachiku, while seeking a compensation of 5 million naira, urged the panel to compel Azoka to pay them the balance of 2.3 million naira, having refunded 1.4.
counsel to the complainant, Henry Abel, asked the panel to determine whether Inspector Henry of the Front FCT SARS played the proper role expected of a police officer in the matter and to establish whether Mr. and Mrs. Mwachuku are entitled to the relief they sought. In the case of a retired Army officer, Mohamed Labaran, a victim of unlawful detention and arrest, he told the panel that his arrest by the personnel of the Nigerian Army was malicious. He said after being identified by 117 Battalion Nigerian Army, his continued detention on the order of DCP operations on the ground that the matter was already before the IGP under whose instruction he can only be freed was an abuse. He refuted the assertion by the police that his arrest was made in good faith in the matter which bothered on denial of right to property and abuse of office. He also asked for a fund of two million naira he paid to regain his freedom. In Abuja, Viera Chomoba, NTA News. And that ends nationwide. Before we go, a reminder that you can always join NTA in the fight against rape and rapists. Thank you for watching. I'm Lydia Ojidiochi. Have a wonderful evening. Goodbye.